Hello and welcome to HITC Sport, right? What I want to do today is look at every Premier League squad and pick out the current player who would star in the most interesting Netflix documentary. We've previously looked at which season Netflix should have documented, but I'm going to focus on a single player and see which one has the most interesting career that needs to be seen on Netflix alongside murder documentaries and repeats the modern family. Basically, I'm about a year behind everyone and I've only just watched The Last Dance and I thought this would be a good idea. That Michael Jordan lad was good at the basketball, wasn't he? I thought he was just an actor in Space Jam. At least now I can start watching Tiger King. No spoilers, please. Right, so on with the Premier League players, Arsenal, Martin Odegaard. If it was players from Arsenal's past, then picking someone here would be ridiculously hard. I mean, Thierry Henry is one of the greatest of all time despite the slander he gets on this channel for his cheap antics and how it broke Irish hearts. Even something on Jack Wilshere would be good. Looking at his early heights and how his career unfolded, the injuries, the tabs in the shower. You could do one on Fabregas, get the real school and what happened when he flung a slab of pepperoni pizza at Sir Alex Ferguson. Or maybe a doc on Carl Jenkinson, just detailing how he went so under the radar for so long and continued to rob the club blind despite being so much worse than everyone else there. But for a current player, it's the Real Madrid loanee Marn Odegaard who I'm going to focus on, because at one point in time, this lad was tipped to be the next best thing. He was going to be the best in the world. He was only 15 and he had the biggest clubs in the world chasing him for his signature. When I was 15, the only thing chasing me was severe acne and crippling anxiety. Despite only being 22 now, Odegaard must have some great stories to tell. Aston Villa, Wesley You'd be excused for forgetting all about Wesley at Villa, as the poor lad hasn't actually kicked a football in more than a year. But while his Aston Villa debut season was a bit hit and miss with the forward having more tantrums at referees than goals scored, he's a wildly interesting character who could tell a wonderful story if given the opportunity. He was born with one leg shorter than the other, he lost his father when he was only 9 years old. As a teenager he had two kids very early and at 16 worked in a factory sorting screws to support his family before he got a chance in Slovakia of all places. At 24 he's already had an incredibly interesting and difficult career and those challenges refuse to go away as he continues his rehab from a horrendous knee injury. Brighton, Danny Welbeck I can just see it now. From the people who brought you The Last Dance, a Netflix original, coming to your screens next month, that guy Welbs, the Danny Welbeck story. Come on, if you don't have goosebumps right now, there's something the matter with you. Danny Welbeck's been in some really interesting dressing rooms over the years, and he must have a load of stories to tell. He played in a Sir Alex Ferguson, he experienced the David Moyes era, he was sold off by Van Gaal, he played in the banter years of Arsenal Football Club, he had about 50 different managers in a week at Watford, and now at Brighton, where he might be able to tell us the inner workings of Graham Potts training sessions and explain why on earth they do their best not to score more than once each and every week. Burnley, Phil Bardsley I mean, it probably won't be long until Phil Bardsley's got his own Netflix series or something similar. His wife's already a big name on ITV, with Tanya Bardsley starring in your mum's favourite programme, The Real Housewives of Cheshire. I mean, it's surely not long until they get their own spin-off series called At Home with the Bardsleys, and with a bit of luck, Wayne Rooney will pop round and they can test out those boxing gloves again. Chelsea, Olivia Giroud while the obvious choice will be N'Golo Kante for his remarkable rise and Premier League triumphs with Leicester and Chelsea, his story's been told over and over again ever since he rocked up at the King Power in his little Mini Cooper. But instead, I think the rise of Olivier Giroud is equally as interesting. He's a player that's been written off year after year, criticised by fans, but when someone is needed to step up when the pressure is on, most managers will turn to Olivier Giroud. He's like a French version of Jamie Vardy just without the pace and the bottles are wicked. He didn't sign a pro contract until he was 21 years old and he didn't make his league on debut until he was nearly 24. Now he's a World Cup winner and one of France's highest ever scorers, with only Thierry Henry ahead of him. And on top of that, the bloke had a voiceover role in the French version of Spider-Man. Giroud's career is more interesting than you'd believe, and one that needs to be told on a 5 99 monthly streaming service. Crystal Palace, Wilfried Zaha It's the obvious one, but come on, you know deep down that you really want to know what happened during Wilfried Zaha's time at Man United. Was there actually any goings on with the boss's daughter, or was it just a load of bollocks in a room that follows him around like a bad smell? I mean, he certainly denied it, but then the next thing you know, you've got Patrice Evra mouthing off on Sky Sports. Even without any potential issue with Moyes, there's a story to be told, from his failures at Old Trafford to a comical England career, all the way to asking to leave Crystal Palace each and every month ever since he got back. Everton, James Rodriguez Basically, I just want to know what James Rodriguez has been doing ever since he swapped Real Madrid for Everton. Look, I know Liverpool's a wonderful place, I've been before, I've had great times there, but it's not quite Spain, is it? This is a guy who won a World Cup Golden Boot, and I want to see him going on days out to the estate where they filmed Brookside before bumming into Paul McCartney in the street and doing a duet of Hey Jude. Fulham, Josh Madger For Fulham, I haven't really got many good options here, although I'd happily watch an eight-part series of Scott Potter just saying things dubbed over songs by the streets, because that stuff's still funny. 
but I'll go for Josh Madger simply because I want to see his side of the story of what happened in Sudden Until I Die. I mean, it would be a short series because the lad's only 22, but that's fine. It gives him more the chance to watch Parks and Recreation for the 17th time. Leeds United, Jack Harrison. Leeds have already had a big documentary go out to the world, but this was on Netflix's biggest rival, Amazon Prime. I mean, I don't care which streaming service any of these docs are on, as long as it's not BritBox. But while a lot of Leeds players got to tell their story, one player who arrived too late was Jack Harrison. This is an English winger who made his name in the States. Every time I try and research his career, it's so difficult to find a deep analysis into his journey through the States and back to Manchester City, and then to Leeds. So if there could be a documentary about the whole thing, it would make my life so much easier. Leicester City, Jamie Vardy. I mean, sometimes the obvious answer is the right answer. Obviously, Jamie Vardy the movie's off the table for now, but sure, a little documentary could be done. Or we might even get an insight into how Rebecca Vardy's going to take down Colleen following their spat. Probably more interesting than watching Vardy turn up late to a non-league game, then scramble for change to pay his subs. Liverpool, Mo Salah. Realistically, if someone's making a Netflix documentary about anyone at Liverpool, it's going to be about Mo Salah. The lad is an Egyptian icon, he's transcended an entire nation, so much so they got him to win a ridiculous Pushkas award for one of his most average goals ever. Well, it was still quite good. It might not be the most juicy or the most scandalous, but it would certainly be wholesome, and maybe we might see how he perfects his dives at home. Manchester City, Scott Carson. I mean, Man City have already got a history with streaming services. They've had their own all or nothing series on Amazon, while John Stones has been on Netflix for years. But I want to see a Scott Carson documentary. What's it really like being drafted in your late 30s to be a backup stopper at one of the best clubs in the world? Did he win a competition? Do the players take the piss out of him in the cafeteria? Does Guardiola get him to wash his car before training finishes? And what really happened when he let that goal against Croatia bobble in and cost England a place at the 2008 Euros and saw Steve McLaren get the sack and get a lifetime supply of umbrellas? Manchester United, Marcus Rashford. If not for his footballing abilities, I want to see a Netflix documentary of Marcus Rashford's incredible work off the pitch, where he finds the time to challenge the government and right the wrongs in his country in his spare time from being a Premier League footballer. I mean, most players just sit at home and play FIFA or have wild sex parties. But not Marcus Rashford, that man's got kids to feed and Tory cages to rattle. Newcastle United, Matt Ritchie. Basically, I just want to know what happened at the training ground the other week. I want to hear all about Matt Ritchie calling Steve Bruce a coward, slapping him across the head with seven rashes of bacon before putting him in the sharpshooter and chatting Ritchie's effing magic. Okay, so most of that probably isn't true. I think I just got a bit carried away with myself. Anyway, it's either got to be a documentary on Ritchie the corner flag enthusiast or a dispatcher's special on Joe Linton because something seriously dodgy has to have gone on there for someone to pay £40 million for him. Sheffield United, Jack Rodwell. For similar reasons to why I picked Madger, I want to hear Jack Rodwell's side of the story to Sunderland until I die. I mean, it looked like he just downed tools and couldn't be arsed anymore, but still wanted to be paid. It'd be like me claiming my tenner a week from the big boss at HITC Towers, even though I haven't made a half-decent video for over a month. That's true. Bore off. Southampton, Theo Walcott. Literally, all I want to see here is Theo Walcott's camcorder footage from his excursions at the 2006 World Cup. That's literally it. I don't care about his hat trick against Croatia, the goals he scored for Arsenal, or his emotional return to St Mary's. I just want to see what he caught on camera when he was a 16 and thrust into the global spotlight at the 2006 World Cup in Germany. It would be like paranormal activity, except the only thing that would make you crap your pants is seeing John Terry head towards your missus. Tottenham Hotspur, Gareth Bale. Whether it's an hour a week or just following Gareth Bale around on a golf course, I want to go into more detail about this man's career. He's the talk of the town once again after scoring a few goals for Spurs. Even some idiots are saying he's back to his best. I mean, look at this idiot. Oh wait, that's me. Anyway, from breaking through at 16, being somewhat cursed at Spurs, that night he put Mike on into a care home, the Euros in 2016, all of that's incredibly interesting. And that's before he spills some tea on his time at Real Madrid and gives the juicy details about what Cristiano Ronaldo really eats for breakfast. I bet it's Cookie Crisp, the renegade. West Brom, Jake Livermore. Basically, I just want to know what really happened when a bunch of West Brom players stole that taxi. And since Jake Livermore is the only one who's still there, then he'll have to do. But he's had a career with lots of ups and downs and could probably give a great insight into the perils of being a professional footballer. I mean, it'll be more interesting than Branislav Ivanovic, Doc. It'll just be him staring intently at pictures of Jeff Shrews whilst he plots his revenge. West Ham, Mikel Antonio. This would be the documentary you'd watch after you'd seen the Jamie Vardy one a few times and don't really want to watch the latest Adam Sandler thriller. Because Mikel Antonio is another man who's had a real rise through the Football League and spent time in non-league, just like Jamie Vardy. If West Ham can end this season with a top four finish, it would be the icing on the cake for a lovely little three-part series. Wolves, Adama Traore. 
this one wouldn't be a documentary or such, more of a game show. Let's just lather them in baby oil, throw them down a slip and slide, get people trying to pull them down. Maybe the winner gets a car. He can try and race your same boat, lift weights with Eddie Hall. It would basically be like his own version of Total Wipeout Clash with Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway. It'd be more interesting than his Premier League career. So there we go, that's every Premier League player who I think deserves a Netflix documentary. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to HITC Sport. And until next time, we will see you around.